see ourselves in our politics as we really are, soiled by selfishness, perverted by prejudice, and inveigled by ideology. Now may the God who created the world and everything in it bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon us and give us peace, peace in our families, peace across this land, and dare I ask, O Lord, peace even in this chamber, now and evermore. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names, by many different faiths. A man and a woman. I've spoken on this topic once before when discussing the end times, but it needs to be readdressed in a different way. At this time, I am literally waving my hands in severe urgency, screaming out to anyone that will hear to turn to the truth and run away from the lies. But it's so hard for many to do this for many different reasons. For many that watch my videos, I do not think that this lie affects the majority of you, but I do know that it affects many that are around you. Today, I have been led to display the current world that we live in and expose a huge lie. Because for many that are in their bubbles, they believe that the sense of urgency we hold is not warranted and just extra. Many do not realize just how dangerous the times that we are currently living in actually are. Most people don't even recognize fully that we are in the end times. End times doesn't mean end of the world. It's more like the end of the world as we once knew it, moving into the Great Tribulation. I have made many videos on the end times if you don't fully understand what it is I'm saying. I have made an end times playlist that can answer many of your questions. But I have also made a specific video about the 10 reasons why we are 100% in the end times. So if you do not fully understand why, you definitely should watch that one. But either way, one reason we have gotten to these end times is because of this great lie. It probably is the biggest lie in the world. And that is a big statement because there are a massive amount of grand scale lies in this world, like who the chosen people of Yah really are, or the lies that we get from NASA, or the Big Bang Theory slash evolution. I know there are a great deal of lies that have been placed on us all, but in the end, this subject really is the biggest lie of them all and it needs to be exposed. I ask all those that are not under this lie to show this to whoever they can. Force your parents, grandparents, children, nieces, nephews, cousins, friends, etc. to watch this with you because the time is almost up and it's time that they are freed from this lie as well as understand the real urgency of today. We need to discuss our faith in God because right now the world says that everyone is worshiping the same one. And if you aren't fully able to see this, then it is an absolute sign of detachment from the Most High and this needs to be changed today. Let's begin. Now, the reason why this is so important is because this means that the one world religion is ready to be accepted. We have never publicly heard a prayer in Congress end with such blaspheme. And God known by many names, by many different faiths, a man and a woman. The people are completely primed and ready for acceptance of the beast religion. I spoke about this in depth in the actual video do we all worship the same God? Here's the thing. Though the world is getting darker and people are accepting things that would never have been accepted a few decades ago, many people might just try to chalk it up as being a godless world. People feeling that it's just a showing of boldness of the times that we are in, or maybe that it's because people just stopped going to church. Many just want to write it off as believing that many people today have just lost their belief in God and that's why things are becoming so evil. But that is actually not the truth. We are not living in a time where people just don't believe in God any longer. Many people actually believe in God and claim faith in God. It's just that they don't believe in the God of the Bible with all of his rules and his ways. We have entered into a time where our true God has been replaced by a cookie cutter God that is customizable depending on whoever the person who wants to believe in him feels. He is a Burger King type of God. Have him your way. The actual issue is that the world does not recognize who our true creator is, what he desires from us, 
what he has done for us, what he wants for us, and his ways for us have been completely skewed. And if each of us individually doesn't get this right, it will lead us to destruction. The greatest lie that has been told is that everyone's belief in God is the same. The lie is that, though there are many names and many different ways of worshiping and believing in our gods, we are all worshiping the same God. There is no difference between the God of the Bible, Yahweh or Yahuwah, than the Allah of Islam, Brahman of Hindu or Buddha, etc., etc. The world is accepting that there are many paths to God and though we believe in God by different names and worship him in different ways, they say that we are still praying and worshiping the same God. It's a blasphemous lie and I rebuke it in the name of Yahshua. I've played this in my other videos on this topic, but I will show this again here because it illustrates this point the best. This video is a global initiative developed by the Pope World Prayer Network. La mayor parte de los habitantes del planeta se declaran creyentes. Esto debería provocar un diálogo entre las religiones. No debemos dejar de orar por él y colaborar con quienes piensan distinto. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Alá. Muchos piensan distinto, sienten distinto. Buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. Todos somos hijos de Dios. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Confío en vos para difundir mi petición de este mes. Que el diálogo sincero entre hombres y mujeres de diversas religiones conlleve frutos de paz y justicia. Confío en tu oración. This was made in 2016, five years ago. And as we closed out 2020, Congress prayed like this. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names, by many different faiths. As you can see, this doctrine has taken steam and it has gained massive influence in this world. When the liberal democratic agenda was being put forward, there was one word that was consistently being thrown around. That word was equality. Now, people were so distracted by the hate of Donald Trump, by the constant provocations of racial injustice and economic welfare, that they rushed towards the word equality without really understanding what the equality stood for. People are so blinded by the chase for racial unity, they do not recognize all the other agendas that they are tying to this quest for unity. They have been so subtle with this change in the world that many people just do not recognize what is happening right in front of their eyes. The world and our leaders are telling you, but we aren't listening. But the answer is not to turn inward, to retreat into competing factions, distrusting those who don't look like look like you, or worship the way you do, or don't get their news from the same sources you do. We must end this uncivil war that pits red against blue, rural versus urban, or, or rural versus urban, conservative versus liberal. We can do this if we open our souls instead of hardening our hearts, if we show a little tolerance and humility, and if we're willing to stand in the other person's shoes, as my mom would say, just for a moment, stand in their shoes. You see, this is what Biden has been saying since he came on the scene. This would not have been able to become reality if it wasn't for President Obama, though. So how do we, as people of faith, reconcile these realities? The profound good, the strength, the tenacity, the compassion and love that can flow from all of our faiths, operating alongside those who seek to hijack religious for their own murderous ends. 
And in this mission, I believe there are a few principles that can guide us, particularly those of us who profess to believe. And first, we should start with some basic humility. I, I believe that the starting point of faith is some doubt. Not, not being so full of yourself and so confident that you are right and, and, and that God speaks only to us and doesn't speak to others. That God only cares about us and, and doesn't care about others. That, that somehow we alone are in possession of the truth. Our job is not You see, he was always talking about other religions and his belief in them all. But if at that time you weren't really looking at it in spiritual eyes, you may not have seen the actual contempt he really had for our faith. I'll break it down in a few. You see, they have been pushing unity and equality, not just with race, not just with sexual orientation, but with religion as well. There now must be tolerance of all faiths and no one can say that their belief in their God is the only way. And this is the biggest lie that takes the priority over all their agendas, because this is the ultimate goal of Lucifer. He wants to replace the worship of the Most High and actually sit on his throne. And we have been slowly moved into this reality. We are now at a time where people have a belief in God, but it has nothing to do with the Bible and the values that it represents. And the younger generation seem to be the pioneers of this newness in faith. If you go on Instagram and look at the hashtag faith, you will see that the faith of the world is much more inclusive and has no real boundaries. And they have worked very diligently to unite all religions and make them seem as one. So because of this, you have been seeing the rise of interfaith services, interfaith prayers, interfaith choirs, and in the end, it will be interfaith religions. The reason why it is so pressing is because it seems the majority, even those who have been declared Christians all their lives, they cannot recognize when this blasphemy is right in front of them. I remember one time I went to my grandmother's house. This was right before COVID really came on the scene. She was watching the local news, and for some reason, there was an interfaith prayer. There was a Jewish rabbi, a Catholic priest, and a Muslim sheikh, and she was watching it. Now, I know she doesn't believe in the merging of faiths, but she was playing the evil on her television because she did not recognize just how far Satan has gone in this ultimate deception. And this is why this video must be made. What I want to do is point out the different ways you will hear and see this. And when you do, you must recognize that this is from the one world religion identifying itself. So here's a big identifier, interfaith. Anytime you see this word being used, you must know it is synonymous with the one world religion. Interfaith means involving persons of different religious faiths. So anytime you see a service, a prayer, a choir, a church, anything interfaith means multiple religions together. This is just symbolizing that all religions can pray together because though they call God by different names, they are saying that they are all praying to the same God. A big part of this symbolism will include representation of the declared biggest three world religions. I say declared because if they were honest about paganism, it would probably be the biggest. But anyway, this symbolism will almost always include representation of the three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, or it can be other faiths. So when you see this now, they are presenting you with the one world religion and promoting your tolerance and acceptance of it. I show these clips often in my video, but let me highlight what they are actually saying. I really want to drive this point home. Representatives of the Hindu, Buddhist, Jain, Sikh, Native American, Jewish, Islamic, and Christian communities of New York City. Now, I can tell you, Papa Francesco, we in New York are sinners. We are sinners. We have many flaws. We make many mistakes. But one of the things we do very well is sincere and fruitful interreligious friendship. We, who have the honor of pastoring our people, we work together. 
We pray together, we meet together, we talk to one another, and we try to serve as one the city we are proud to call our earthly home while awaiting our true and eternal residence in heaven. May God protect us. May God nourish us. May we work together. May our dialogue be enlightening. May we be free from hate. Om, peace, peace, peace. Lead us from untruth to truth, from darkness to light, from death to immortality. May all know peace. Homage to the Buddha. Victory begets enmity. The, de the defeated dwell in pain. The peaceful live let us pray in silence. Now you must pay attention because you will hear leaders make consistent mention of it while never actually saying their full intentions. So when you're hearing them talk about our differences, when you're hearing them talk about unity and equality, when you hear them say words like how you worship, how you pray, very subtle words like that. Right now, when people are scared, it's easy to be cynical and say, let me just look out for myself or my family, or people who look or think or pray like me. Distrusting those who don't look like, look like you, or worship the way you do, or don't get their news from the same sources you do. Reaffirm once again uh, that in this country, uh, regardless of what we look like, where we come from, uh, who we worship, uh, we are all one people. The people in this room come from many, many backgrounds. You represent so many religions and so many views. But we are all united by our faith in our Creator and our firm knowledge that we are all equal in His eyes. We are the dream keepers, which is why we come today black and white and all races and religions and, so and sexual orientations to say this dream is still alive. You might have killed the dreamer, but you can't kill the dream because truth crushed the earth shall rise again. We gonna rise never to fall again. We gonna stand up even when our legs are tired. We gonna make this dream come true. And it is part of my faith that all people are holy and all people are sacred, unconditionally. And that is what makes faith sometimes, that's what, what prompts us to transform, because it is unconditional. It's not they are actually saying that us being divided by our religions is something that we should not allow. It's subtle, and if you're not in tune with the agenda, it can often fly right by you. Here's another one. When you hear pastors and what we now call faith leaders talk about there being many paths to God, this again is a promotion of one world religion. This is the thought that started off with one main person coming out with it, who was Oprah. To be a then human being, and, and many ways, no, but many paths to what you call God. That and her path crazy. might be something else, and when she gets there, she might call it the light. But her loving and her kindness and her generosity brings her, if it brings her to the same point that it brings you, it doesn't matter whether she called it God along the way or not. I there couldn't person. possibly be just one way. What, what about Jesus? What about Jesus? I can't see any one of these faiths as superior to any of the others. I see each of them has its Leading own. Leading to the ultimate God. And each has its own insight and genius. When, and what we say about God isn't God at all. Uh, that the biblical God we have is a kind of starter kit, really. I but, love that. Uh, the biblical God is a starter kit. Yes. I love that. And you... But then her support of it has pushed this thought into the mainstream, where many prominent people are promoting this thought. Okay, so here's the big question. Are there many paths to get to the one God? Well, I believe, Oprah, that there... I believe that Jesus is the way to the one God. But I believe there are many paths to Jesus. You know, you don't know how Jesus would reveal himself to somebody. So I'm not into excluding people. 
Jesus can reveal himself to anybody. They say it in many different ways, but those with discernment are able to hear it when it is being promoted. Not, not being so full of yourself and so confident that you are right and, and, and that God speaks only to us and doesn't speak to others. That God only cares about us and, and doesn't care about others. That, that somehow we alone are in possession of the truth. Our Listen out for this kind of dialect and thought. Something else to look out for are those that promote another Jesus to you than what the scriptures present. Now, this is not directly the one world religion promotion, but it is indirectly. I talk about how to distinguish this in my video, The Jesus of the World versus The Jesus of the Bible. You will see many people on television or on social media declare their faith in Jesus. I, I am a Christian. That is my faith. I'm not asking you to be a Christian. They call on his name and by them calling on his name, it then makes other people assume that they are actually a believer. Be very mindful of the people in the mainstream that are calling on the name of Jesus. Most of the time, they are presenting you with the Jesus of the world. And that Jesus that they are referring to is accepted in the one world religion. And in this world today, in the mainstream, he is mainly who is being spoken of and being represented. Like this, for example. Please, Lord Jesus, we don't want to have any kind of issues. With the pandemic, I really... Please, Lord Jesus, we don't want to have any kind of issues. So here's the rule. If you see someone call on Jesus, but then in the same act promote the world to you, they are not representing the Jesus of the Bible, which is why I prefer using his Hebrew name, Yeshua, because there isn't much confusion surrounded with this. Okay, let's talk about the next identifier. I remember when I was younger and not fully aware of my faith. In the mornings, when I listened to talk radio shows, Steve Harvey and Ricky Smiley always used to talk about God on their shows. Steve Harvey would always give praises to God. He sounded very sincere, actually. I remember in the Kings of Comedy, he gave praise to God, said he was nothing without him. And then right after that, went right into promoting thoughts and ideas that were opposite of the God that I thought he was representing. I remember questioning it at that time, but just took it as no one is perfect. But after coming into a great deal of knowledge about how this world is run after that point in time, I am now able to see how these people were working on infiltrating us, gaining our trust, and then pushing us into something new. Really hard, but I really don't deserve all this. I don't. Mine ain't that good a Christian. You must be aware of those who are pushing the idea that we all worship the same God. This is not even subtle, but very obvious. Let's use Steve Harvey as an example. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey, stand-up comedian, entertainer, television host, family man. But most importantly, I happen to be a man of faith. See, oftentimes, people who are religious think their religion is right and everybody else is wrong. There is only one way to God. But Steve's faith is unique because it's really not about that. There's no one one way to heaven, no one way to paradise. It's like television. Now it's over 800 channels of cable and they're all pretty entertaining. So I'm pretty sure, man, that to get to heaven, there's got to be more than one route. Because somebody watching another channel or taking another channel than you, they still getting entertained and they probably still getting to heaven. What Steve did reminds me a lot of this mosque. This mosque in Abu Dhabi belongs to people in the Islamic faith. But as a sign of tolerance to the churches next to them, they renamed the mosque to Mary, Mother of Jesus Mosque. Can you imagine a mosque with the name Jesus on it? Yeah, the world could use a little bit more of that. And it's not just about Christians and Muslims. It's about Christians, Muslims, Jews, and everybody else. At a time when religious intolerance is on the rise, we need many, many more of these mosques, many, many more of people like Steve. After hanging out with Steve for a week and visiting mosques, churches, 
and museums in the Emirates. I am convinced religious harmony, religious respect, religious tolerance is the most important thing. And we need to promote that every single day. Do you see how easily they have now begun to promote this? They make it sound like a nice peaceful thing that is about love, when it is actually completely evil, dark, and about hate and rebellion. And if you're not moving with spiritual eyes, this world will deceive you. Be aware of when people just label themselves as men or women of faith. But most importantly, I happen to be a man of faith. Or faith leaders, or the faith section in the bookstore. This is again, a way of being very general with inclusion. Through this word faith, any religion is able to be included in this, and that is what they are doing. They are being very subtle, but changing the way we look at our beliefs. Just because someone is a man or woman of faith doesn't mean that they believe the same thing as you do. Also, beware of the New Age principles, philosophies, and thought that masquerade itself as Christian. You will find many people that proclaim their faith as Christian but are giving a bunch of new age messaging that sounds good, except it's not biblical and actually from Eastern religions like Buddhism and Hinduism. People that are taking on these messages are actually embracing the one world religion without them actually knowing they are doing so. They are embracing other religious beliefs, but have tied it into their own faith. You must be mindful of these messages as well and do not include yourself in them. The point I am making is that the world is right now promoting the one world religion. It's not just promoted, but the idea is accepted now. And because people just want peace, they will be more than happy to be rid of the division that comes from the separation from our faith in Yahshua and all the other faiths in the world. Because the majority are already under the belief that it's all the same, just different names and different traditions. And that is why it is the biggest lie in the world. And one day people will come at you this is why believers in the world will be persecuted. It's because of your lack of tolerance towards their beliefs. So you must be strong and recognize this and be ready for it. The reason why people believe this lie is because they don't know Yeshua. And the unfortunate thing is that they think that they do because they knew church, they knew religion, they knew traditions, they knew pastors, they knew gospel music, all those things that have become distractions and idols People are actually equating this with the true belief. People are chasing church instead of being the church. People chasing religion instead of chasing relationship. Now here's the thing. I do understand why people that want to understand why belief in Yeshua is separate from all other beliefs. A huge reason is because the true belief has been hidden from the masses and surrounded by idolatry. So people just tie the complete belief in what they see from his biggest spokesmen, which are the churches. And they think that that's what the true belief entails. And so with the many hypocrites, false traditions that Christians accept that they don't even know, like the history of Christmas and Easter, the idolization of pastors and church organizations, all the false doctrines that are spewed, all the different denominations, it is easily seen that Satan has run a huge game of deception and infiltration where most don't recognize the true voice and doctrine of our Heavenly Father. People have highlights and points, but don't understand the true will of our Father through His Word. People do not recognize our Father's true will and His true desire for His people. They are so distracted by lies and falsehoods that His true will and nature and His plan for us all seem negative to them or just extra. And that is very sad and it must change. Now, I do go over this in greater detail in my video that explains the one world religion. This video is just trying to help you identify it more clearly as Satan talks through his subtleties and distractions and sellouts. If this topic interests you, please watch the other video about the one world religion. But let me be clear, our belief in Messiah brings the vision, not unity of all faiths. We believe in him through his word, not through man and their false isolation of scriptures. We live by what the scriptures say. This is not a message of hate. We do not feel we are better than anyone. We just believe fully in his word and history has proven his word to be true. 
So let me tell you what his word actually says. By asking us to accept that we all worship the same God by different names, ask us not to believe in the word who tells us why, how, and what to believe in. So what does the Bible say? Yeshua himself says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 through 36, Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. <laughs> Very clearly, he is not bringing peace and unity, but like he said, the vision, a sword. We are actually called to be separate and set apart, not uniting with everyone else. And this division sets others against us, even those in our own household. Now, let me make this very clear. We are not to be divided through hate and just spewing hate on people. That is not what being set apart is. We are to be set apart through our intolerance of evil, through our protests of evil, not aligning with the ways and wickedness of this world. It's not about spreading hate on the street corners, being mad and angry, spewing hate at others. That's not what it's about. Let's continue, though. He also does not tell us that there are many paths to him. He did not say we can be broad in our way of accepting him. He actually said, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14. You see, he wants us to be very narrow, and he said a few will find it. So if everyone is on the same train, believing the same thing, it's obviously a contradiction to what he has told us. The whole world won't be accepting it. A few will find it. It's the complete opposite. He also said this very concretely. In the time when Thomas asked him where he was going, and can they know the way, Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's John chapter 14, verse 6. Don't ever forget this. And this is our faith. We are not on our high horse, and we are not claiming to know everything, and we are not placing our individual selves over anyone, because it's not about us. Anyone can receive his gift of salvation, and anyone can be delivered. But it is first about repentance, submission, and obedience. All of the ways and examples we have seen in this video, and all the other examples that will be displayed as we continue to move on in these prophetic times, will all go against these scriptures I just showed, and the rest of his holy book. When Barack Obama was given his speeches at churches, his eulogies, or at his prayer breakfast, he would most of the time start with, Scripture tells us, Scripture tells us, Scripture tells us, Scripture tells us, giving all praise and honor to God, the Bible calls us to hope. They were still living by faith when they died, Scripture tells us. But then most of his rhetoric after was in contradiction to the Scriptures he was telling us about. True believers really hold on to the faith and his word and believe in all of Scriptures. And don't just isolate the few that helps them make the point that they want to believe in. We don't bring God into our lives and make him fit in the way we want. He is God, our creator, our source, our everything. The nerve of us to believe that we can determine how we want to recognize him or worship him or believe in him. The nerve of us to put all these other things in front of him when he has consistently warned us against idols. You must be diligent in these last days and really understand that the world that you are living in. If you're just waking up, you need to be clear in your understanding that Satan wants to be worshipped as God. He has followers that are fully about bringing about his goal and over the centuries they have strategically gained power, influence, and control where most of the mouthpieces of the world today are representing satanic values even though they can be labeled as Christianity. And today, if you have been aligned with much of the world and its mouthpieces, you need to humble yourself and repent. I don't care if you're a teenager or in your 90s. Satan is deceiving this world, and this video has concretely shown you that this is happening right under your noses. You must be diligent and make sure that you are not being led astray. 
you must fully stand in the word and reject the ways of the world. But it first starts with humility. Most of my family and friends are not able to receive this message because they are too proud to admit that they have been deceived. I will never forget that my first true introduction to our Savior came because I had to admit that I was being deceived and manipulated. And many don't want to go that far, but you have to. This video was made so that it can be clearly seen what time it really is in the world. And if this information is new to you, you may be overwhelmed. I just ask you to pray to God about it. Give it all to Father. But you should absolutely have a discussion with the person who shared this video with you and talk about it. And I also ask the person who is showing it to you, I ask them to have this conversation in love and in peace. I don't know how many more chances we have to reach the people, but it's time that we go all out in love and faith in executing the fruits of the Spirit. It's not easy. I know it's not for me. It's hard helping and dealing with the people that are rejecting you. But time is almost up. Evil is rising. They are replacing our Father with a cookie cutter God that is actually Satan in disguise. All those under this deception will not be ready for our true Messiah, but in fact ready for the false Messiah, the Antichrist. You have been exposed to the lies and how to identify it. You can see that there is a very broad group of people that are pushing this. Pretty much everyone in the mainstream. And if your churches aren't preparing you for this, they are complicit as well. I want you to be ready for our Messiah. I want you to serve him in spirit and in truth. I want you to be holy, set apart, and redeemed by our only hope. I want you to come out of Babylon and do not partake in her ways. But it's up to you. Father is reaching out to you. Please accept his call and come to him in fullness and in truth. I truly hope that you do. Be blessed. Okay. Thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and please share this with others. We need to sound the alarm, pull people out of the acceptance of this huge lie and wake up as many as we can. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I'd like to thank all those who donate and contribute to this ministry. Please know that your donations are truly a blessing to this ministry and help very much. Thank you for your love and support and letting our Father use you. You are truly a blessing and I really appreciate your support. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. Be watchful and ready and never take your eyes off of our Savior. I love you all. <laughs>